Здравствуйте, товарищи! And in this video, I take you guys on a journey of self-discovery. So, uh, without further ado, I just want to jump right into the premise. So, with Gamers Gate, I've been spending a lot of time thinking about why this issue is so important to me and why it has ignited my passions so much. Um, for those of you who don't know, I've actually got a degree in psychology. And one of the things my education has taught me was that it's important to take time and analyze your own thoughts and emotions and figure out why you think and say and do the things that you do. You know, analyzing the reasons why you act the way you act and deciding whether or not that's a beneficial thing. And I'm not in this get up because I'm, uh, the only re way I can analyze my thoughts is if I'm in a suit. No, I just gotten off work. So in regards to Gamers Gate, this is kind of what I've been doing, analyzing my own thoughts and trying to decide why I got so passionate and why this matters to me so much. And the answer was pretty obvious, because video games are important to me. And that begs the follow-up question, well, why are they so important to you? And uh, that's where I am now, contemplating why video games are so important to me. So, I invite you to come, like I said at the start, on this journey of self-discovery with me, and uh, kind of recount some of my past experiences with games and how they've created the person that I am today. So let's uh, start at the beginning, which is the, the best place and the most obvious place to start. And the first games I ever played were Duke Nukem 3D and Tomb Raider, both on the PC. And I was about six years old at the time, and I would watch my father play Duke Nukem a lot. And it always looked a lot more spectacular when he played it. And it always looked better when he played it because uh, when he wasn't playing it, he would turn on the parental controls, which turn off like the violence and the gore and the sexual content so I couldn't experience that firsthand. But he was also better at the game than I was. But uh, not for long, because eventually I played the game so much that I got better than my dad. There was this certain level that he couldn't beat, that he couldn't get by, it was too difficult, he couldn't figure out what to do or what have you. Um, you know, some of the details have been lost with time. But uh, one day when he was at work, I was playing the game and I actually beat that level. I, I got past the part that he couldn't get past. And I was so excited about it, I could hardly contain myself. I was actually, you know, six years old. I pick up the phone and phone dad at work to let him know that I had beaten this level in the game that he couldn't beat. I never actually asked him how he felt about this, but I, I'm sure he was, uh, he was amused by it. Uh, although on the phone he didn't sound like the happiest of campers. But that was really the first time that I felt like genuinely accomplished in a video game. That I had really accomplished something. I did something that my dad couldn't. And goddamn, I felt great about it. The other game I played a lot was the original Tomb Raider. I had an aunt who was really into the game. And every time I'd go over, she'd be playing and she'd let me play. And I got to run around. And I wasn't really that good at it. I couldn't get past the first couple levels or so. Uh, the puzzles were too hard. The controls were too cumbersome. But uh, actually, like when the, I think I can't remember if it was the first or the second one, or sorry, not the, the second or the third one, where you, there was a tutorial mission in the Croft Manor and you could spend your time exploring the manor and, and kind of practicing the moves that Laura could do and whatnot, and that's where I spent most of my time with Tomb Raider. The best part about this though was when you could practice combat because Laura's butler would come out and I'd be dressed in this World War I armor and you could just shoot at him over and over and over again. And to me that was the most entertaining thing I'd ever seen in my life and I'd laugh and laugh and laugh. It was uh, probably the noises that he made that I thought was so entertaining. But with Tomb Raider what it really did was it established a connection between my aunt and I. And it's a connection that still exists very strongly to this day. So I'm thankful that Tomb Raider was able to create that uh, strong family connection for me. So for the first years I was exclusively a PC gamer and uh, I didn't really have a lot of say in what I was gonna play because it was all really dependent on what dad bought and we played a lot of hockey games like NHL 2000 not 2000, it would be more like 1996. I played some learning games like the Magic School Bus game, but that really all changed when we got a Nintendo 64 for Christmas 
and uh, I believe it was 1998 because it was the year that The Legend of Zelda came out because with my Nintendo 64, I got uh, Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. I remember playing uh, Ocarina of Time uh, for the first time and I couldn't, I couldn't figure it out. I couldn't even get to the Deku Tree. So I was really frustrated with the game. And when I went back to school after the Christmas break, I ceremoniously announced to all my peers that the game was terrible, that I hated it, I didn't like it, I wish my parents never got it for me. But uh, all that changed once I beat the Deku Tree. I just couldn't believe how wrong I was. Because the first time... I got to Hyrule Field and it all opened up in front of you. You know, my mind was blown. It's uh, one of those first experiences in games that just can't ever be recreated. It was also the first time I felt an emotional attachment to any of the characters in the game. Because I remember in that at that moment when you beat the Deku Tree and you're leaving the Kukira Forest for the first time, uh, you have to say goodbye to all your friends. And to me, this was like the most emotionally devastating thing that any little kid could ever experience, having to say goodbye to everybody you've grown up with and uh, go out there and, and, you know, never see them again, even though, you know, you would see them again. But I didn't know this at the time. I was, I just broke down. I was just crying and crying and crying. And then when uh, we went up for dinner that day, my brother and I, we were, we were playing the game. I just like burst into tears at the dinner table. My mom couldn't figure out what was wrong. I guess it was the thought of one day if I had to say goodbye to all my friends that, uh, that really got to me. But uh, that was the time that I learned that no other medium could, would make me feel for the characters you know, within that world as much as video games would. So the next year, uh, it was all about Pokemon. And man, did I ever spend a lot of time playing that game. At Before... Uh, the game came out, I had a subscription to Nintendo Power, and they were hyping the game, so as a little kid, I, my hype was through the roof. I just could not be more excited uh, for this game, and unfortunately I didn't have a Game Boy Color at the time, so you could imagine my delight when both my brother and I received uh, Game Boy Colors, and uh, I got Pokemon Red, and uh, he got Pokemon Blue. You know, it was a great relief that I got Pokemon for that Christmas because when I went back to school uh, after the break everybody had a Game Boy and everybody had Pokemon and during recess we we're all talking about our our Pokemon and how far we would gotten in and the epic battles we'd fought and we'd all start trading when that super expensive uh, time-consuming like like a link cable came out and you had to plug it in and you had to get everything synchronized and it was a pain but uh, Getting all these people together to trade Pokemon and trade stories was uh, was just a great experience for a kid. The best part, though, was like the rumors because everybody had a rumor about certain Pokemon in the game and how to get infinite rare candies so you could just level all your Pokemon up to level 99. And uh, as time went on, uh, the rumors got progressively crazier and crazier until eventually someone would uh, would debunk them. But I remember when one of my friends was telling me about the missing no glitch in Pokemon. I thought it was just so full of crap at the time. But uh, lo and behold, that was actually something in the game. That was one of those those really cool glitches that I could just never forget. That really uh, really altered my experience with the game. With Pokemon though, the thing you didn't understand when you were a kid. And now that I'm looking back at it, is just what... A uh, great way was to create connections with new people and meet new people. I specifically remember there was a kid in school that I really uh, didn't like up to that point. But uh, he had a copy of Pokemon. And uh, one day me and him got talking and we had that common ground. And all of a sudden we were swapping our stories like I mentioned before. And, you know, one thing led to another and we were trading our Pokemon. And uh, by the end of that year we were you know, inseparable friends. So the life lesson I learned from Pokemon was that video games really could establish lifelong friendships. Jumping forward in time, I played games for many years after that, but the next one that marked a turning point in my life was the first Call of Duty, specifically the first level of the Russian campaign. 
At the time, I knew almost nothing of the Second World War. But when I was on that boat going across the River Volga to Stalingrad with my Russian comrades for the first time, I was just blown away with everything that was going on. You know, there was planes coming in overhead. Uh, guys are jumping over the side because they wanted to get out and the commissars would pull out their guns and execute them for desertion. But that moment that really stuck out to me is you get off the boat and uh, you don't get a gun. You know, the guy in front of you gets a gun and then uh, the commissar hands you uh, a, a stripper clip of bullets and he says, you know, when the, when the guy in front of you dies, you pick up that rifle and you start shooting. And then you looked up and you saw streams of men just running up the hill, uh, getting mowed down by German machine guns. And uh, at the time, I thought that there was no way that this battle could have been real. That there's no way that a battle that this epic and desperate could have been fought in real life. So I looked it up and it turned out that this battle really did happen. And... From that, I wanted to learn more about the Battle of Stalingrad, and then I wanted to learn more about the Eastern Front, and then I wanted to learn about the Western Front, and then I wanted to learn about the people who led these countries in the battle, and then I wanted to learn about other parts of history, not just about World War II. So it was this game that really, to me, uh, sparked my passion for history that I, I have still have to this day, that I just love learning about uh, histories of all shapes and of all sizes and of all corners of the world. And I don't know if uh, it would have happened without the original Call of Duty, you know, a game that's just crapped on so much nowadays. Well, the name, not the first one. I think most people really like the first one, but the name uh, just has such a bad connotation today. But uh, I am very thankful that uh, I was able to experience the uh, first Call of Duty and that it led me down the path of uh, always absorbing new history knowledge that I'm on today. Soon, I found out that I enjoyed games that were more complicated and had more moving parts, so to speak. So I started getting into strategy games more and more. I'd already been playing StarCraft for a long time, and then I started reading about uh, Rome Total War, and it looked like that historical, complicated game that I have been waiting for for a very, very long time. And after buying it and playing it, it more than lived up to my expectations. And so it was Rome that started my love of the Total War series, which really is the reason why I'm speaking to you guys today. As, well, I'm sure several of you know, my first Let's Play was Empire Total War. And that started this uh, YouTube legacy that continues to this day. You know, it's really difficult to quantify how much of an impact this channel has had on my life. Through it, I have made lifelong friends and learned many technical and valuable skills that have helped me in my career. Actually, I've, I've shown my current employer and previous employers my YouTube channel. And it was a demonstration of the kind of skills that I had in my repertoire. It was a demonstration of uh, what I could bring to the table within an organization. And actually, my current employer has told me that my YouTube channel was one of the factors that contributed to my hiring at my uh, current place of employment. But most of all, it gives me the opportunity to connect with people all around the world about a medium that I love and to share the human experience of enjoying a game together. I am constantly amazed and humbled by the viewers who have tuned in over the years, each leaving their mark on my personality and me hoping that I do the same. I just want to sincerely thank everyone who's tuned in over the years and continued to inspire me. It's the reason I've been doing this so long and hope to continue to do it much longer. So I'm giving you this context so you can know what gaming has given me as well, how it has shaped me into the person I am extremely proud to be today. However, I've yet to tell you the most important reason why video games are important to me. Six years ago, a game called Left 4 Dead was released, and I was quickly hooked on it and made some connections with lots of other players through playing Endless Nights. One of these connections happened to know another person 
with whom I would be playing a lot of Left 4 Dead with, and uh, many other games for that matter. I didn't know it at the time, but this person was going to become my future wife. We became fast friends after our first game of Left 4 Dead, and started a friendship that would last for many years. She quickly became the person I looked to for guidance in this crazy world, and her to me. Eventually, it seemed like we knew everything about each other. And one day, the stars aligned, and we could finally be together. And then, uh, after that, one thing led to another, and well, uh, here we are today. You know, one of the things that honestly frustrates me the most about this whole debate which has been raging over the past two months is when people tell gamers that all they want is to create some homogenized boys club that all they want is to kick girls out and other people who would tread in their sacred clubhouse nothing could be further from the truth because from the bottom of my heart I honestly hope that each and every one of you out there can have the incredible experience of meeting your life partner through a medium you both so cherish. I hope that each and every one of you can know the amount of joy and happiness that brings you. I guess now that we're doing all this looking back, I feel like gaming used to be simpler when we were kids. We could just game. And then we all grew up, and with that came politics and agendas. I hope one day we might return to that simpler time when gaming was just about playing games. Maybe we're too far gone. But games shouldn't be about telling you what to think or how to feel. They should be about creating those experiences, whether they're fun, terrifying, challenging, or heartbreaking that we can take with us for years to come. Games aren't about pushing an agenda. They're meant to be enjoyed. Games aren't about creating dividing barriers, but meant to break them down. And with that, we're at the end of this video, and I wanna thank you guys so much for watching. But before I go, I would like to encourage all of you to share your own stories with me. And I would like to encourage you all to share your stories in any way you like. Write them in the comments below, send a Facebook message, tweet at me, do your own video and send it to me, do an audio recording and share it. And within a week's time, I'm hoping to collect everyone's stories and create a video about why video games are important to all of us. And with that, I want to thank you guys for watching once again. This has been Destanlander, signing off for now, and you guys take care.